Ava and Isaac. Um, so this is section 4.1. Just start there. Um, I hope you remember writing all this down from somewhere in chapter 3. I don't even know what section it was now. But there was a post-it I asked you to put all of this on and I wanted you to make sure that it all fit on that one post-it so you'd be able to take the post-it off and put it wherever you need it so you can always remember the steps. And really you should have learned most of the steps before you took the test for chapter 3. So this might not be quite as necessary as it used to be because most of chapter 4 is just extending what you did in chapter 3. It's the exact same stuff but we're just going to extend it a little bit so we're going to get a little bit harder problems and we're going to add in some more problems that use these skills so the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about the steps so we have solving equations you remember that you always need to draw the line and it's getting more and more important especially on smaller problems that you draw the line um, a lot of times it's easy for you to tell what you need to do if it's a small problem, but now it's going to get a little bit more tricky. So make sure you always draw the line. You need to simplify both sides, get rid of the parentheses before you try to get rid of any fractions. Combine like terms. Remember in order to get rid of parentheses you use the distributive property. In order to get rid of fractions you multiply by a common denominator and that's multiplying everything on both sides of the equation. You combine like terms on either side of the equation before you worry about moving stuff around. When you move the letter from the right to the left side, you need to make sure that looks like it's backwards because you read from left to right, but you're actually moving the letter from the right side to the left side. You need to make sure you always do addition and subtraction in order to move those letters. Same thing for moving the number from the left side to the right side. And then you divide by the number in front of the letter, which I'm sure you've gotten lots of practice at so far. And then you check your answer. And remember that there are different ways to check your answer. So if you're doing something on a video, you look and see what the answer is in the video. If you're doing something in classwork, you go to your mom to check it for classwork. If you're looking, um, if you're doing something in homework, you look in the back of the book, make sure it was right. If you are doing it on a quiz, then you have to plug that answer back into the original problem and make sure you get the same answer on both sides when you work it out. Not that the answer that you get is going to be your answer, but what you plug in is what your answer is. That's your check. So I have two problems up here for us to start out with, both of which I think you have the ability to do. So I'm going to draw my line. Now I'm supposed to simplify both sides. I don't have any parentheses in this problem. I don't have any fractions, but I do have some like terms on this side. So 4a plus 3a gives me 7a, and I go ahead and write down the stuff that I didn't use. Then I don't have a letter on the right-hand side, but I do have a number on the left-hand side, so I have to get rid of that by doing the opposite. So I'll add 7 to both sides. So 7a is equal to 28. And then I get to divide both sides by 7 to get that a is equal to 4. Like I said, I bet you can do it. Go ahead and pause it and see if you can get the next one. Okay, I'm saying the pausing is done. So I'm going to draw the line. I have to simplify both sides. On this side I have parentheses I need to get rid of. So I'm going to do my distribution. So that's 8x minus 8 gives me negative 24. I don't have any fractions. I don't have any like terms. So now I can add 8 to both sides. So 8x is equal to a negative 24 and a positive 8 is a negative 16. Divide both sides by 8 x is equal to negative 2. I don't always
always show when things cancel out. Don't always mark them out, but I do always write the answer down. So, if you mark it out, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I'm sure you got that one right too. In fact, I'm sure you're going to get the next two right as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and put them up. long one. I have to draw my line, so I need to make sure that I draw my line behind or underneath where my equal sign is. That's where the line goes. Always underneath the equal sign. Then I have lots of parentheses to get rid of. I get rid of it by distributing whatever number's in front. So in front of this parentheses, I have a 1. In front of this one, I have a 1. In front of that one, I have a 1. So when I distribute here, I have 2y plus 5. When I distribute here, I'm not distributing just a 1. I'm doing the whole negative 1. So that's going to give me minus negative 1y, or just minus y, minus 3, or plus a negative 3, either way. And then when I distribute here, I end up with that. Now, you're just starting out in this. So I tend to show every single little teeny tiny step. Okay? So I'm going to show all my little distribution things, and I'm going to show all the little ones there. But as time goes on, and the more you practice, and the more you do these, the less likely you are to start doing these little things. And you'll probably just go to writing this down instead of showing every single little individual step. And that's fine. You need to show as much as you need to show so that you can understand what you're looking at. I don't want you to feel like you have to do every single little step every single time. So just like we used to do the whole plus a negative every time there was a minus sign, but I don't do that anymore. I just tell you it's a minus. Move on. So now I need to go through and combine my like terms because I don't have any fractions. So I underline all my like terms on this side. 2y minus 1y gives me 1y plus 7y is 8y minus 3y is 5y. And then I have positive 5 and a negative 3. That gives me a positive 2 equals 17. That's a bit more manageable. So 5y is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 5. y is equal to 3. Not that I don't believe that, but if I were to plug it in. 2 times 3 plus 5 minus... 3 plus 3 plus 7 times 3 minus 3 times 3 is equal to 17. This will be my little checking area. It gives me 6 plus 5 minus 3 plus 3 is 6 
plus 7 times 3 is 21 minus 9 equals 17. Still have to do the stuff that's in the parentheses. So that's going to be 11 minus 6 plus 21 minus 9 is 12 equals 17. 11 minus 6 is 5. 5 plus 12 really does equal 17. Which means my y does really equal 3. So, one more. I didn't really give you a chance to pause and try the last one, but I am going to give you a chance to pause on this one to see if you can get it. So go ahead and pause it and try. Okay. Draw my line. Negative 2b minus 8 equals 11. Add 8 to both sides. Negative 2b equals 19. Divide both sides by negative 2. Sorry, I was thinking in my head. B does really equal a negative 19 over 2. You can leave it like that. If you would have changed it to a mixed fraction, I'd have been okay with that, or a mixed number. So that would be a negative 9 and a half. Or if you would have grabbed your calculator and got a negative 9.5, I'd have been okay with that too. Any of those would have worked for me. Don't have to do all of them, just any of them. So, you asked for a shorter video. I don't think I can get too much shorter than that and still cover everything that needs to be covered. But because you get a shorter video doesn't mean you get shorter classwork and homework. So, for our classwork, we have the class exercises. Oh, I didn't write down a page number. Section 4.1. Numbers 8 through 16 even. And then for homework, we have practice exercises. Numbers 5, 9, 13, 15, 19, 23, 25, and 27. It's not as much as you think, I promise. Only eight problems here and less than eight problems there. So I don't think that's too much. But it doesn't mean take your time. It means be thorough. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>